I've got an inequality for question one. I'm going to solve it just like I would solve an equation. Um, but then the and then that's the, the only difference there is I'm going to keep the inequality sign. So I'm going to take away five from both sides. <coughs> that's going to give me nine uh, x is less than thirteen point five. So I've now got to do thirteen point five divided by nine. Let me use a calculator for it. 13.5 divided by 9 is 1.5. So x is going to be less than 1.5. Uh, unknowns on both sides. I'm going to deal with the x's first. I'd like to keep a positive coefficient of x, so I'm going to take away 2x from both sides. That's going to give me 4x plus 2 is less than 14. I'm then going to take away 2 from both sides. That gives me 4x is less than 12. And then I'm going to divide by 4, which gives me x is less than 3. Uh, question 3, we've got a bit of multiplying out brackets. So just make sure you're careful with the negatives. 2 times by 3a gives you 6a. 2 times by minus b gives me minus 2b. Plus 3 times by 2a gives me plus 6a. And plus 3 times by minus b gives me minus 3b. 6a and another 6a gives me 12a. Minus 2b, take away another 3b, gives me minus 5b. Question 4. Same deal. 5 times 3a gives me 15a. 5 times by 5b gives me 25b. Minus 4 times by 3a gives me minus 12a. And minus 4 times by minus b, this is the one where, which you might be caught out by, is going to give me plus 4b. Because I've got minus 4 times by minus b. Two negatives multiplied together give me a positive. So 15a take away 12a gives me 3a, and 25b and another 4b gives me 29b. 1 and 5 6 times by 1 and 1 third, I'm going to convert to an uh, improper fraction. So I've got 11 6 I'm going to multiply that by 4 thirds. That's going to give me 44 over 18, which is going to give me 22 over 9, which is going to give me 2 holes and 4 ninths. Subtracting mixed numbers. So, I, get, I think I'll convert to improper fractions, but there's more than one way of doing this. Um, but if I convert to improper fractions, I've got 9, 10, 11 thirds. Take away 2, 4, 5 halves which is going to be, um, I'm going to need to have a common denominator, so put them out of 6. So I've got 22 sixths, take away, so that's times by 2, times this one by 3, so I'm going to take away 15 sixths, and that's going to give me um, 7 sixths, which is going to give me 1 whole and 1 sixth. Five point six times by one point six. I would just do fifty six times by sixteen. Now fifty six times by sixteen. Um just trying to think if there's a quick way that I would tend to go about this. Um in my head. Probably not. So whatever method you've got for fifty six times by sixteen, I wanna see a grid method or a column method. And you get 896. Perhaps I didn't explain clearly what I was doing there. I'm just converting these to whole numbers, working with them, and then I'm going to convert back. So this is something like 5 times by 1.5. So I could tell that my answer is going to be 8.96. But if I, if I don't, you know, I, I could just, you can also see here, that's multiplying by 10, that's multiplying by 10. This is going to have to be divided by a hundred altogether. So my answer to this question here 
is 8.96. I got 10.5 times by 5.4. So I'm going to again, I'm going to, I'll do 105 times by 54. Um, and 105 times 54, whatever method you've got for that, it's going to be 5,670. So that was times by 10, that's times by 10, the whole thing's times by 100, that's going to be divided by 100, 56.7. But you can kind of see it's going to be about that anyway, because 10 times 5, so approximately, if you approximate it, it's, it's about 50. So my answer here is going to be divided by 100, which is 56.7. 7. 6 divided by 0 0.4. I mean, with these ones, I would probably do this method. 6 divided by 0 0.4 is the same thing as 60 divided by 4, and 60 divided by 4 is just 15. That's a nice quick method of doing that. Um, Again, with this one, I've got 48 divided by 0 0.3. Using equivalent fractions, I've got 480 divided by 3. And if we just uh, think about that, so 16, 32, 48. So I make that 160. You could set yourself up a bus stop method if you wanted. For that. All right, 4 plus 4 root 7 plus 5 root 7 plus 9. Basically, you've got like terms here. This root 7 is sort of taking the place. Imagine this was A, and you were just collecting like terms. The, I've got these, these 4 root 7 and 5 root 7, which are just like terms for root 7. So that's 9 root 7. And then I'm going to collect these like terms. You could use different colors. I'm just using a different um, different squares. I should really have included the plus beforehand. So I've got 9 root 7 plus 13, or 13 plus 9 root 7. Because addition is commutative, which means it works either way, you could have 13 plus 9 root 7 or 9 root 7 plus 13. Right, now, this is then one which is going to stump a few people. Proper uh, proper word solutions, and you should have, should be watching the video to try to help you with this sort of one, if it's something which is which you're not sure about. So, what I'm looking for is I'm looking to simplify these thirds. Now, because this is a prime number, I know I can't simplify the root 11, but this 704 I can simplify. Um, and what I need to do is I need to look for prime factors. Okay, because the key rule which I'm going to be using is that if I have if I have something like root a b, that's the same as root a times root b. Now, just as a simple example, if I had root 18, I could write that as root 9 times by root 2, and root 9 then simplifies to 3. So my simplification of that would be 3 root 2. That's just as an example. So what I did was I looked for a square factor of this number, and I used that to simplify it. So I've got to look for a square factor of 704. And it's quite, you know, it, I can see that 4 works as a square factor. So you do have 4 working. Um, I think I've still got 176. I think there may be a larger square factor, so I'm going to see if it divides into a larger square number. So the next square number up is 9, so let's just see if it divides into 9. It doesn't, it doesn't easily. So let's just see if it divides into 16. It does. All right. So I can write this here as square root 16, I've still got 44, so square root 44. So that's the same thing. So square root 704 is the same as square root 16 times square root 44. Because this 74 could be seen as made up of 16 times by 44. Now, I, so 
I'm going to rewrite this here, root 16, as 4, because that is what the square root of 16 is. So I'm simplifying it. And I'm still looking here for any square factors. And I can see that 4 goes into 44. So I'm going to rewrite this out as root 4 times by root 11. Now I know root 11 doesn't, doesn't simplify, but I've now got this which simplifies it. So I've got 4 times by 2 times by root 11, because root 4 simplifies down to 2. So I've now got 8 root 11, right, 4 times 2 gives me 8, so I've got 8 lots of root 11, and I add 7 lots of root 11, and that's going to give me 15 lots of root 11. Right, I've got 3x to the 5, y to the 5, and all of that is raised to the power 3. So just to be really clear about this, what situa the situation is here, the situation is I've got 3x5, y5, times by itself three times. Those, that's the same thing. But, I mean... What you need to do when you're applying your index law is remember that the coefficient is going to be cubed is going to be cubed. So I've got three times three times three. So that's the coefficient is going to become twenty-seven. But the power is only going to become multiplied because I've got x to the five times x to the five times x to the five, and we know when we're multiplying bases. You know, you know, indices which have the same base, we, we add in that index. So it's going to be x, not to the 125, but rather to the 15. And y, not to the 125, but also to the 15. Uh, and then when I'm dividing, I subtract the index. So that's x to the 1, which is just x. Ah, question 15, another nice one, okay, um, because it, it, it trips people up. So let's remember, in one centimeter squared, if I draw my square, that's one centimeter, or it's 10 millimeters, that's one centimeter, or 10 millimeters. So one centimeter squared equals 100 millimeters squared. Okay? And that means that here, instead of dividing by 10, if it's squared, I have to divide it by 100. So my answer is 1.5 centimeters squared. Uh, and a similar thing here, if this is 1 meter, that is equal to 100 centimeters. If this is 1 meter, it equals 100 centimeters. So 1 meter squared is 10,000 centimeters squared. So 0 0.55 meters squared to centimeters squared, I'm going to have to times by 10,000. So that's going to give me 1, 2, 3, 4, oh my goodness, uh, 5,500 centimeters squared. Uh, make x the subject of this formula. So I'm going to multiply both sides by b. That gives me yb. I'm then going to take away yb equals x plus a. So times both sides by b. Gives me yb equals x plus a. Then I'm going to just have to take away a from both sides. So I've got yb minus a equals x. This one, I need to... I need to take away b first. I can't square both sides first unless I also square the b. So, I mean, you would be able to do that, but you'd have to square both terms on this side. So it's going to be easier for me to take away b from both sides. So if I take away b from both sides, that's going to give me y minus b equals root ax. Now I'm going to square it. So I've got y minus b squared equals ax, and then I'm going to divide by a. That gives me y minus b, all of that squared, divided by a, equals x. 
Question 19. Calculate the area of the circle with radius 4 centimetres. Leave your answer in terms of pi. Um, all right, well, area equals pi r squared. So pi 4 squared. Is this really that easy? So pi times by 4 squared. I may have misread the question. 16 pi. Let me just check. Calculate the area of the circle with radius 4. That's it. Right. I thought it might be too easy, but no, that's true. Question 20. Calculate the area of a semicircle with diameter 9. It's uh, diameter 18. I was getting one step ahead of myself in my thinking. Leave your answer in terms of pi. So diameter is 18, so radius is 9. So the whole circle would be pi uh, 9 squared which gives me 81 pi, but half the circle, it's a semicircle, so I'm going to divide it by 2, therefore that gives me 45, no it doesn't, 40.5 pi. Uh, 